Good afternoon, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, my contemplative time this morning has been all about happiness. <laughs> Imagine that. I focus on happiness quite a bit when I was contemplating. I thought, wow, in my first degree, my last project was about the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> and then, of course, I looked at, or I actually got to see live a monk named Matteo Ricard who focuses a lot of his research on happiness and he's a Buddhist monk and I was really impressed with his uh, presentation too and then today I hear this this wonderful lecture which was about the pursuit of happiness and this was by a Swami and today I thought I'd talk to you about a bit of this and one of the things I want to focus on is the feeling or the experience of this happiness. No matter when I have looked at this carefully, there's always this childlike enthusiasm about it. And this is what I would love for people to start embracing or finding or recovering in their own systems because it's something that many people have lost in our day-to-day -day busyness of life. So I came across this quotation, which is by John Lancaster Spalding, and this quotation says, the genius is childlike. Like children, he looks into the world as into a new creation and finds there is a perennial source of wonder and delight. Isn't that beautiful? And that's just it, this perennial source of wonder and delight we can see in children, right? Even if they're doing the same game or playing the same thing or listening to the same music or speaking about the same topic, they're so excited about it as if they've never shared it with you before or they've never experienced it before. And it's a wonderful place to remember that we've all had that and we still carry it if we seek to find it. So in the lecture that I heard this morning that I really want to share with you, I want to make sure that you know that there were four different aspects of happiness that were talked about, not really aspects of happiness, but roads, I guess, that different people take and all of us take at different times. And so the very first um, option, I'll say, well, I'll even say that it's probably the most common direction for first experience that people think of when they want happiness and we're all seeking happiness in life, right? So when we're looking at this first area. It's about desire and pleasure. And if you know that if you're having a not great day, what is it that you desire? You might desire your comfort foods. You might desire the people that make you feel better. You might desire uh, an addiction that you might have. You might seek pleasure from a sunny day. You might seek pleasure from an activity that you really enjoy. So let's say you love watching the sports, right? You might find yourself I feel comfortable if I can just, you know, lose myself in watching this, right? So that sort of idea that this brings me some happiness. Now you'll notice that all of that will be short-term happiness, right? So it's transient. It comes and it goes. So you have that favorite food or that comfort food. And as soon as it's digested and maybe not even that long, it's done. And suddenly you might want something else, right? So this is an interesting awareness about it's our most common thing to do initially, but it can happen in any of these areas, right? So it's whatever we desire that gives us pleasure and that pleasure is transient. So some people might go for sensual pleasures of the senses in terms of touch. They might want hugs. They might want sex. They might want different things. It all falls into this category. The next category is about possessions or wealth. And you know, a lot of people are working on life in terms of I need to do this work because it brings my money to pay my bills at the end of the month, or it might even be I need to make more, right? So I notice that a lot of our society is very much in this space. And did you know that even learning falls into this? I need more, right? I need to learn more. I need to do more reading, I need to watch more videos, I need to see more shows, I need to read more papers, I need to do this. And this becomes this different drive. So now it's beyond just basic pleasures. We're going just a little bit beyond and thinking, I need to do something. But I like to think of that first section as having, like I need to have some food, I need to have my satisfaction in um, 
something that's uh, essential pleasure. And so usually it will involve senses of our body, right? So I need to look at this. I need to listen to this. I need to eat this, right? I need to touch this, right? So all of that is in that first category. In the second category, I find it's more about doing. So it's the busyness of life. I need to do this to bring me happiness. And the third category is an area of I'll say what would be kind of the conventional religion sort of direction. So this is more about duty and responsibility, right? So even if we think about conventional religions, we will think about one should do this because this is good and one should not do that because that's not good. Now in this area, we can also think of social services that we might do. So we might find ourselves that we are volunteering, right? So volunteering is a completely different level of engagement, even in terms of going to a, a church, a temple, a mosque, any of these places, places of worship, I'm going to say, oftentimes it's to even help lots of people become volunteers in those spaces. And this is a really good feeling, right? It's in a different sort of energy than the first two. The first two are a little bit more selfish. And then now we're moving into non-selfish, right? So especially when people are doing this with no intention of gain. Now, if there's ever any intention for gain, like, oh, people will think I'm a good person because I'm volunteering, that brings us back into the first two uh, areas, which are a little bit more selfish. So again, this third section is this area of non-selfish action. And then the fourth area is a space that's called moksha, or someone might know it as liberation. And moksha literally is a term that just means freedom. So this freedom space is also not a selfish space. This is the space of the seeker. So the spiritual seeker, if you are asking questions like, what is this all about? And what's the purpose behind all of this? And who am I? And all of that. And is there a higher consciousness? And is there a way for me to connect with that space? That is in this fourth space of getting to a place where we're seeking something more, something beyond the conventional or the habitual sorts of patterns that uh, many of us uh, can find ourselves in, in many aspects of our lives, right? So many years of our lives and some people less time, some people more time. And oftentimes people will think that, oh, if we move into moksha, we won't have the pleasure of the first. And it's not true. So just so you know, there is a focus of our minds that we will be aware of if we spend time to think, and I'd love for you to think for five minutes after this video, which space do you work most often out of? What is it that brings you the greatest satisfaction, the greatest happiness? And what is it that you find yourself doing regularly that brings you happiness? Because certainly the frequency with which you do something brings it into our life experience more regularly and is more available to us. And you will notice if you spend time to think about this, which one of these areas that you are most focused in, even though it could be several of these areas, you will find that one will be the one that takes most of your energy, your mental energy, your thought, your words, your actions, right? And I'd love for you to think about that for five minutes after this video. In the previous lecture that I did here, I wanted to share this uh, message that was also shared from another Swami, which is Swami Vivekananda. And he says, combine utmost seriousness with childlike simplicity for the best life. So in this, I thought this was so fitting because just yesterday, someone talked to me about I thought you were so serious and yet you choke a lot. So that sort of idea. And you know what? It's so funny because I find that I do choke a lot and people who know me well know this. And if you're just meeting me initially, you might think I'm really serious because if I'm working with you, I'm serious about making sure you feel better. And I always throw in humor and I always throw in laughter. So by the end of a visit, most people have figured me out or my personality out. For you today, I would love for you to know that that seriousness is equally important as that childlike simplicity. And do you know that for some time, I was just thinking about this today, I've had as my bio on Telegram, 
the words profoundly simple to describe me. And I think this really does. And I love putting it all together with what I've listened to and heard today. And I'd like to finish this video with one more quotation, which says this, it's by Wayne Dyer. This quotation says, recapture the childlike feelings of wide-eyed excitement, spontaneous appreciation, cutting loose, and being full of awe and wonder at this magnificent universe. And I don't think that could be said better. I do hope that you are filled with awe about this magnificent universe. And I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.